Hello Internet, it's me Josh, the Aging Gamer. So, it's been a really long time since I've done a retro review on one of my favorite superheroes ever, The Amazing Spider-Man. Well, I think it's time to do a new retro review right now. So I've already done a lot of reviews on Spider-Man games in the past and they were mostly games that I owned or played a lot of when I was younger. So I think it's time to try something new, to me anyway. In fact, I want to try playing a new Spider-Man game uh, on one of my favorite consoles, the Game Boy. The very first Spider-Man game on the Game Boy was published by the dreaded LJN. <laughs> but it was developed by the very awesome Rare. Nice! Could Rare make a portable Spider-Man game any fun? Let's find out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, not to be confused with other games of the same title, The Amazing Spider-Man for the Nintendo Game Boy. So The Amazing Spider-Man. This game was released in 1990, and man, does it show. So let's get to the plot of this game. It's... well, let's just watch the opening cutscene. Hello, Parker residents. Don't pretend with me. I know who you are, Spider-Man. Recognize my voice? Sure, I'd know that electronic cum-bubbling gargle anywhere, you fishbowl fuckface. Well done, Webhead, but cut the wisecracks if you ever want to see Mary Jane again. What have you done to her? Where is she? You better not hurt her or I'm going to tear you up a new asshole. <laughs> oh, damn, Spider-Man is pissed. Let's go ahead and get this game started. So here we are. Where's Spider-Man? You can jump around and press A and... Oh, shit, civilians. Let's beat them up. Press B to punch, or crouch and press B to do a kick. When you beat up bad guys, they drop shit. Catch it before it hits the ground and you'll collect it. Sometimes it's points, sometimes it's web cartridges, and sometimes it's even web upgrades. And before I start really getting into the levels of this game, uh, let's talk about the controls, because there's a real learning curve to this game. It took me a while to really understand the controls. It took me about like halfway through the game to understand what I was doing. So in case anyone wants to play this random 30-year-old Spider-Man game, let your friendly neighborhood agent gamer give you some tips. First off, there's two kind of jumps. There's a regular jump and a high jump. To execute a high jump, you must move forward to gain momentum, then press A. However, don't hold the button down too long or else you'll start web slinging. It's actually rather annoying how often you'll end up web slinging in the air instead of landing back down on the ground. Now onto the web attacks. If you hold down the punch button, you'll shoot your web out. Sometimes when you beat up an enemy, they might drop this little box here. <laughs> Collect it, and this means you got a new web upgrade. You'll start with a single web shot, then a web net, then a spread shot, then a web net spread shot. Pretty cool. Collect another upgrade once you're fully upgraded, and shit, it restarts. Fuck that. And my last tip, don't punch unless absolutely necessary. The punching is delayed a bit, so it's best to just drop down, wait for the enemy to come to you, then do the much quicker crouch kick. Now with that said, let's go kick some ass! <laughs> the first level is the alleyway. We quickly get ambushed by some jabronis. You know, I get why supervillains attack Spider-Man, but why in the hell are these guys attacking me? Like, what business do you have? You really think you stand a chance? One hit from me will freaking launch you off the screen! You have no chance, you dumb motherfuckers! <clears throat> anyway, continue and be careful not to get too close to these manholes. If you do, we'll see our first real Spider-Man villain, the Lizard. Nice! Jump on top to bop him away. The level here is pretty basic. Just jump off of randomly stacked crates and watch out for these assholes in the windows. We'll eventually reach a dead end where we see some magical looking nonsense. I'm not sure what to do so I start punching the air. I hit something! It's Mysterio. Mysterio poofs around the stage so try to hit him when he appears. After enough hits, we defeat him. Bullhead didn't tell me much. Who's this? Crawl up the roof and meet your doom, Spider-Man. I'm through with you, pumpkin brain. You'll never trick-or-treat again, you bitch-ass pussy. The next level has us climbing up a building. 
your spider sense will warn you of objects falling, so watch out and keep venturing up. Once we reach the rooftops, we'll have more bad guys in our way. At the end, we'll find Hobgoblin. His pattern is simple. He flies by, dropping bombs, then he'll drop down to the center of the screen, allowing you to kick him in the face. He repeats this pattern until he's dead. Yeah, for a subway ride, maybe you'll make it to the last stop. Don't worry about me, tail twirling, cock sucking piece of shit. Your sting isn't strong enough to stop all Spidey. So on the subway, we're moving and we get these punk ass bitches that'll pop up every now and then. There's also a lot of bats for us to kick. Hiya! Kia! The train makes a few stops, but we eventually reach the end where Scorpion appears. Scorpion falls down from above, and this tail twirler will try to reach out at you. You can try punching if you want, but I try sticking to using web attacks. That's the end of that tale, but still no Mary Jane. Who's this? Yeah, someone who's gonna run you into the ground, Tom. You're still as stupid as you are strong. Right, Neanderthal? You low-life, unloved waste of space? So this level has us running around Central Park, where we see the lizard return, birds, and more jobbers. At the end, we randomly reach a dead end in an alleyway. And who appears but none other than the Rhino? He does his typical video game rhino trope of running back and forth non-stop. Just high jump over him, punch him, high jump over him again, and repeat until he's defeated. That was fun, who could this be? It is your deadliest foe, Spider-Man. Shut up, nerd! So this next level, we're climbing on another building, and this level is hard as hell. There's just so many ass munchers in the windows and flocks of birds that just never stop appearing. Fuck this stage! If you make it through this part, you've only made it halfway through this level, and the next half is pretty tough too. We're gonna be jumping and web-slinging building to building. There's a lot of birds to kick and a lot of jerk asses to dodge. At the end, we run into Dr. Octopus. I'm not sure if there's an easier way, but the way I do this fight takes a long time. First, stay on the top corner to get Doc Ock to kinda follow you to the end then jump down, attack, then run away back on the above platform. Just keep on repeating and after a long time, he'll eventually fall off the building. Hello, Webby. Your little lady and I are getting... Wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. Why does this sprite look like that? His head is so huge, it doesn't match his body! Actually, outside of Rhino, they used the same body sprite for the villains in every cutscene. They just added a different head to each one. The others don't look so bad, but Venom looks... looks just ridiculous. So, this last level in the sewers is a really difficult level. Everything from every direction will attack you. You have to move super slow and deal with every obstacle one at a time, which includes these ass clowns shooting from these hanging pipes, fresh turds coming through the walls, and these crocodiles in the water. Surprisingly, the lizard does not appear here. With how slow you have to move through this level, it feels like it takes forever. But make it to the end, and we'll face off against Venom. This fight is actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. I pretty much stay in this corner, kick him when he comes down in front of me, and dodge his attacks when he appears on the other side of the screen. After enough hits, he just collapses in the sewage. <laughs> yeah, I hope you get some piss and shit in those open wounds I just gave you, you overrated hunk of anal discharge. Mary Jane appears and gets all lovey-dovey. Oh, Peter, I knew you'd come, but you really need some nicer friends. Ha 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 Bitch, you almost died. So anyway, that's Spider-Man for the Game Boy. How is it? It sucks. But those are just my opinions. Okay, let's, let's explain it a little bit more. So the controls in this game are a bit funky, but they're tolerable. In fact, this whole game is just barely tolerable up until the Doc Ock stage. From there on out, the level designs get stupid difficult. It goes from basic Game Boy platformer to frustrating nonsense. The only parts of this game I enjoy are the boss fights. Each fight has different patterns and offer a decent challenge. This game as a whole, though, 
isn't anything special, but I'm really not that surprised. A lot of Spider-Man games around this time were mediocre at best. Well, someday I'll have to check out these game sequels to see if they're any better. As for this, I mean, if you want to play a bad Spider-Man game, knock yourself out with this one. But those are just my opinions. What do you guys think? What do you think of Spider-Man for the Game Boy? Love it? Hate it? Never played it? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, if you dislike, blah, 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 blah. Subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and I'll see you all on the next one. Take care.